Welcome to the AP Physics Workbook Solution. Here we have Unit 5 Momentum. The section is 5.K, Conservation of Momentum. Here's the scenario. The three questions that we're trying to ask in this experiment is proving conservation of total momentum, mechanical energy, conservation of mechanical energy, and the newton sturt law, the action and reaction pair. First of all, we want to see what needs to be measured. First, the mass of each cart, because all of these require mass in each of their equations, as well as the velocity. Also, you might need acceleration if you want to do question three, but again, you can get acceleration if you have the velocity. Now the procedure. Let's go over the, la the label diagram first. Before there, I want to give you a visualization of what the conservation of momentum looks like when two objects collide. So we're going to set up the lab experiment to mirror this conservation of momentum scenario. So based on this, I can set up this lab. What you have here are two carts on a horizontal surface. They both have the same mass. On the right hand side where it's being released is a motion detector. The motion detector will record the movement of the cart as it collides towards each other like the conservation diagram to the right. Let's go over the procedure. Step one, like from the section above, we need to measure the mass. So measure the mass of each cart. Here, I set it up as 250 50 kilograms, e 250 grams each. Make sure you convert it to kilograms. Two, put the cart on either end of the long straight frictionless track with a motion detector set at each side at the end. Set and start the motion detector to record the ve velocity as a function of time. Push the cart forward. It might be recommended that you have a mechanism that does push it at the same um, force when you're pushing it. You don't want to change the force. Five, record the velocity before and after the collision. Six, you have to repeat step uh, four to five ten times. So this should be a space here. At least ten times to reduce error. Step four and step five is just pushing the cart forward. Take advantage. Take the average velocity and graph it as a function of time for each cart. Now, based on this procedure, we can answer these three questions. It says, explain how the measurement made in part A can be used to answer question one. Conservation of momentum can be measured when the momentum before the collision is equal to the momentum after the collision. You would graph and use the velocity versus time graph to determine the velocity before and after the collision. P naught equals to P1. Momentum initial equals momentum, momentum final. That's how it looks like in MV form. This is the theory behind conservation of momentum that answers question one. If only conservative force do work, the total mechanical energy of the system neither increases or decreases any process. It says consistent, it is conserved. That's why the friction force on the track has to almost be frictionless. This is also conservation of energy here to help you, which is going to be for our actually part for that part. Okay. Here I also supplied how the graph would look like. This is a sample theory of the graph. You're going to see a positive velocity from the cart as it goes towards the other cart. It's going to hit it. That's the three seconds. That's the blue line. Okay. You're really not going to have the blue line. I just showed the blue line that's going up and down as the um, time interval that the cart collides. It's not really going to take a whole second. I just wanted to split here. Then you're going to see the velocity come straight down because it's going to go in the opposite direction. Next, that is how you would get conservation of momentum. Question two, it's this part. That's the conservation of energy. And how would you do that? 
Well, in this case, there is no MGH. There's no potential because there's no up or down in this case. It's only in a flat horizontal surface. So I can say the conservation of energy can be measured when the energy before is e before the collision is equal to the energy after. Since the track is linear, there is no gravitational potential energy and only a transfer of kinetic energy. Kinetic initial is equal to kinetic final. MV not squared is equal to MV1 squared. The mass is canceled out. You would just have to compare the velocities. So technically, it's the same thing as part one. Uh, part three, you're trying to prove uh, the action reaction pair for Newton's third law. Newton's third law for the action reaction pair states that the mass of the force of the mass on the other mass or the cart on the other cart is equal to the second cart on the first cart. So mass times acceleration not is equal to mass times acceleration one. Acceleration before it has to be equal to the acceleration afterwards. The average acceleration can be determined by looking at the slope of the velocity versus time graph. So again, you will only need this graph. Look at the slope. Again, take the magnitude of the slope because the negative just tells you the direction. Okay, the values of the slope should average out. That is the reason why, again, you do step six. You have to repeat the push and the collision several times to reduce error. So you can get a very clean slope. All right, but there you go. That is 5K.